MAGA cultists at the Fox Propaganda Network are in denial about the recent record-breaking fundraiser featuring Presidents Biden, Obama, and Clinton. Fortunately, liberal Fox News commentator Jessica Tarlov is on hand to bring the receipts, provide a fact check, and roast them when and where appropriate. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, we have several clips to look at. Um, we're actually going to start with some of the Fox News denial from uh, Judge Jeanine Pirro from Greg Gutfeld trying to cope with the blockbuster fundraiser from these three Democratic presidents, exacerbating, again, an already titanic disparity between President Biden and the Democrats and Donald Trump and the Republicans with respect to fundraising. So um, I will also add here, too, that... Um, Again, Jessica Tarlov is about to go on maternity leave here in the next couple of months. She is pregnant, so we got to get in our Jessica Tarlov fix. I am unapologetic about the amount of times we feature her because it seems like here recently, again, every appearance has been even better than the last, especially when it correlates with all the good news for President Biden and the Democrats. So it's, it's provided her a lot of um, material with which to uh, smugly uh, put in the faces and rub in the faces of her four right-wing co-hosts, and I'm here for it. So we're actually going to start, though, with some clips of Janine Pirro, one of her MAGA cultist uh, co-hosts, and Greg Gutfeld, another, and then we'll get into Jessica Tarlov's fact checks. And, you know, I, I, I couldn't help but I was reading about some of the things that were said, and Obama said to a protester, he says, you know, you can't just talk and not listen. That's what the other side does. Well, Mr. President Obama, that's exactly what MSNBC does to Republicans. They do all the talking and they won't listen. And in the end, Donald Trump will outraise Biden by just having people at his club, having dinner with him because people are fascinated with him. They know he's not going to stumble or mumble or any of that other stuff. Okay, so some really stupid things there that were said. Number one, the idea that the Fox Propaganda Network doesn't try to run roughshod over the few, the scattered, you, again, Jessica Tarlov, um, Marie Harf, I believe, is the other one as well that we occasionally see on Outnumbered. The one or two token Democratic surrogates that they put on payroll, they try to run roughshod over all the time, right? So even by the standards that she's trying to impose on MSNBC, Fox News is guilty of the same. That's why it's not, you know, two conservatives, two liberals. It's always three, four, five conservatives and one liberal because they feel like they have to outnumber this person. They constantly heckle and run roughshod. We've talked about this, right, which just proves how much better Jessica Tarlov is by far than them individually. They are no match for her one on one. They are terrified at the prospect of ever squaring off with her in a one to one setting because she's infinitely more intelligent. The facts are on her side. She's a better debater. She's much more charming. So I just love that that double standard there that Janine uh, doesn't recognize. And also the idea that Donald Trump doesn't stumble and mumble. Really? Hilarious. Just pure cope. But again, it's not just Janine Pirro here. It's also Greg Gutfeld uh, kind of like flowing in in the aftermath of what Janine Pirro said, um, trying to make the case that uh, Donald Trump is worth three Democratic presidents. The big point, and the judge uh, alludes to it, why were the three of them there? You needed three Democrat presidents to deal with Trump. Think about the math on that one. I love how smug he is about you needed three to deal with Trump. No, actually, one beat him in 2020, you moron. When it was Joe Biden versus Donald Trump, Joe Biden got more than seven million more votes and he won the Electoral College by the same margin that Trump won in 2016. Donald Trump lost one to one to Joe Biden. The reason that the other two presidents were there are because they like Joe Biden and because they think Joe Biden has a record and aspirations on which to run. Sorry that your loser president or former president can't get the only living Republican president, George W. Bush, to come campaign for him. And sorry that your own loser ex-president can't get the endorsements of the vast majority of his own cabinet. It's because he's intellectually inferior. It's because he's ethically inferior. It's because he's unfit for office in a way that Joe Biden simply isn't. And those are the facts. In fact, you don't care about your feelings. But thank God again, Jessica Tarlov is here. So we're going to play a couple of clips. This is what she has to say in response. Jessica. All right. The, the truth of the matter is, is that the Biden campaign 
is doing quite well right now. And raking in $26 million in a night is really good. And Donald Trump hopes to the figure the AP is putting out there, bring in $33 million next weekend when he has a fundraiser at Mar-a-Lago. I hope you guys will be making fun of him then when he has Vanilla Ice and Kid Rock. <laughs> now, the way that and Scott he's Mayo. spending... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Kevin Sorbo, maybe? One can have to go. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm so excited just thinking about it. it I'll the trade Sorbo been- for Lizzo. Again, and it just goes to show how good she is that she even elicited a genuine laugh from Jesse Waters, who is, you know, scum of the earth. Right. Even he found it amusing because he knows on the celebrity front, Republicans are desperate to have celebrity endorsements. They say they don't. But when Kanye West, you know, went through his Nazi turn and he was flirting with Donald Trump, as Nazis are wont to do, they loved it. They clung to him. They hewed to him. Because they actually, when they say, we don't want celebrities in our business, they really do, right? MAGA Republicans, Jesse Waters, the Fox propagandists, they really want celebrity endorsements. They would would hew to them very closely. Unfortunately, very few celebrities will openly endorse Donald Trump because Donald Trump is such a loser. They mentioned Kevin Sorbo here, the guy who used to be Hercules, Hercules on the TV show in the uh, the 90s, and then Andromeda, sci-fi show in the early 2000s. Um, you know, again, just a washed up has been actor who says he can't get any jobs because he's conservative might be because he's weird or he's not that great of an actor. I digress. Although I will say I found Andromeda pretty entertaining back in the day, but again, great joke, great point by Jessica Tarlov, but uh, the hits keep on coming from her. So in the substance of it though, when you bring in $26 million in a night or $10 million out of the state of the union, you can do things like open up 10 field offices in North Carolina. It's the first time the Democrats will have a field office in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We have three dozen offices in Wisconsin. That's how you win elections with ground game. And that's what Donald Trump is hoping to do as well with his ca- well legal fees and then field offices. I'm right. sure, because we're arresting him yes. all the time. Yes, you have. You're, yes. you're- I can't stop. Please. Again, she's she's so good. I, I love it when it, it's tough. Again, I think she has the hardest job in mainstream media by far because, folks, I'm sure some of you get it. I can tell you from experience, it is difficult when you are outnumbered. Just, numbers in a debate do matter. Numbers in a conversation matter. It doesn't matter how well prepared you are on the facts. Um, it's It's tough. It's tough when you have multiple people shouting at you because it's a lot of engagement. Jessica Tarlov is outnumbered. You know, by she's four to one, right? She has four people, four uh, opponents with which she must contend. She has no backup, nobody who can jump in if she stammers, stumbles, or has to look at her notes. It's all on her all the time. And they aren't playing by Marquis of Queensbury rules. They're constantly heckling her. So the fact that this is a great example, she's not only right on the facts, right on the substance, rhetorically effective, she's also hilarious too. Um, so a couple of things here I just want to emphasize. It's not just on the five. Brian Kilmeade elsewhere on the Fox Propaganda Network seems to be in denial over the colossal fundraising disparity between his side of the aisle and ours. So I want to play this clip to just really emphasize that. I don't want to downplay. $26 million is a lot of money that they were able to raise at this fundraiser. The Democrats have a massive cast advantage. Uh, the DNC and Biden ended February with 155 million. That's more than twice Trump and the RNC. And that does matter. And we need to be paying attention to that. Republicans need to raise more money, especially in this era of mail in balloting, where it really is no longer about convincing Americans. It's just about chasing ballots. And that takes money. So Republicans uh, do need to raise more money. We need to pick up that game. Uh, so I don't want to downplay the significance of that disadvantage, that cash disadvantage. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Trump's re, uh, rejiggering the RNC. And- yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, there's, there's still time. By the way, I just want to throw in that that comment by Lisa Booth is really stupid. So mail-in, mail-in ballots, in order for them to be valid, have to have a person filling them out. So she says, it's not about persuading people. It's about chasing ballots. Well, ballots are sent to people and filled out by people, so persuade the voters, right? The logic is still the same. So stupid and disingenuous. It doesn't matter if it's absentee ballot, mail-in ballot, in-person ballot. There's a person at the end of them that you have to persuade in order to get them to vote for you. What she's struggling to cope with, like most Republicans, is simply the fact that, generally speaking, Republicans are less popular, Republican policies are less popular, and Republicans tend to lose popular votes and referendum. Sorry, sucks to suck. Maybe you all should moderate more. Maybe you all should actually try to persuade people outside that cultish MAGA base. Maybe centrist, independents, moderates, and right-leaning Democrats. Maybe you should campaign on things which are popular and effective. Don't complain about mail-in ballots. Try to persuade more people instead of suppressing voter turnout. But again, 
Good on her for acknowledging the reality of the colossal fundraising disparity. A couple of things I want to remind people because um, Jessica Tarlov mentioned the legal bills. As a reminder, in 2023, Donald Trump spent $50 million in donor money on his legal bills. $50 million in donor money. Not his money. He's supposed to be a multi-billionaire. I am so rich. I'm such a rich boy. Believe me, I'm so good with business. But he has to spend $50 million from hard-earning, you know, or from money from hard-working donors, people in red rural states, very often in poverty. That's how little respect Donald Trump has for his own supporters. Absolutely despicable. And people say, well, that's going to change. I just want to remind people that there was an attempt at the Republican National Committee to codify a rule which would prevent Donald Trump from using donor money to pay his bills. And MAGA cultists killed it. They prevented that resolution from passing because Donald Trump does indeed want to use the RNC as a um, uh, as a piggy bank. And so the last thing I'll say is actually the last thing I'll play is this clip from uh, Quentin Folks, who is uh, one of President Biden's uh, top campaign uh, officials. And this is what he has to say, summarizing all of this in the aftermath of the fundraiser. We'll, we'll let them decide on that. But uh, look, what, what we did uh, the other night was unprecedented. Uh, in a single night alone, we raised $5 million more than Donald Trump raised the entire month of February. Uh, and it's really important uh, because it's another sign to me that our coalition is mobilizing, they're energized, uh, and they're coming home uh, to support President Biden in this election to make sure Donald Trump doesn't get the White House. And what it allows us to do uh, is to hire staff, open field offices. We've opened 100 offices uh, in the month of March. We've got staff in every single one of our battleground states. We're communicating with voters directly. The president, the vice president, the first lady, the second gentleman, they're all out on the road taking the case directly to American voters. We've got yard signs, literature, billboards. We are running a campaign and it takes resources to run a campaign and set up this infrastructure and you need time and Donald Trump does not have either. He is running out of time. He's not consolidating his base. He is strapped for cash. The RNC is in shambles. In juxtaposition to us, we are pulling off fundraisers like this. We have our president traveling, talking to voters directly. Uh, and so I'm really excited about what these resources allow our campaign to do and very proud. And then the other piece of that is that grassroots supporters are making up a large portion of this. These are people who are giving less than $200. Uh, people, 1.3 million donors have contributed to this campaign, uh, 97% giving less than $200. And so that's a really, really big thing for us. And we're incredibly proud of it. Yeah, listen, again, I'm not saying that the the election is many months out. It's entirely possible, given that Republicans do have big money behind them, right? <laughs> they have multimillionaires and billionaires. It is entirely possible that Donald Trump will potentially out-fundraise President Biden. It's just it's not happening right now, and it hasn't happened in the past several quarters, right? To say nothing of the organization as well. Right now, in terms of running the campaign, the Biden campaign is just objectively better. But, again, there's money behind the Republicans. The polling isn't completely lopsided. There's still time for Donald Trump, unfortunately, to eck out a win. So we still have to be careful. We have to be shrewd. It's not done yet. But we also have to acknowledge the meaningful victories for Democrats and for President Biden that occur along the way. And this one was one. And I love the cope and the denial and the the attempts to rewrite what it is from the Fox Propaganda Network and Republican advisors. Let me know what you think in the comments.